My name is Dieter Pavelczak. I am from the University of the Bundeswehr Munich in Germany. My talk today is a work in progress about a new programming environment for teaching the QC programming and assessment. I am from an engineering department and we currently see for our students of electrical engineering and information technology an immense conflict. On the one hand, we have to educate for the age of digitalization, a global connected world, industry 4.0 and Internet of Things. Every day we read in the newspaper about new security leaks, data breaches, cyber attacks. Hospitals or city authorities have to close down due to attacks, third parties debit your credit cards and so on. And on the other hand, our students struggle learning programming. Our introductory programming courses have, and this is comparable with other engineering or computer science departments in Germany, a high failure and dropout rate. So how can we solve this conflict? Give students a better access to learn programming and in the same time teach security awareness. Of course, only a small part of IT security is based on secure coding. A huge number of security leaks are based on social engineering. Still, I think it's essential to teach programming with focus on security from the very beginning. A solution to this conflict is to use a new simplified programming environment that on the one hand lowers the barriers for novice programmers and on the other hand focuses on secure programming according to the third C coding standard. The outline of my talk. So first, I talk about the new programming environment and the automatic assessment systems. In the second part, I show the students' evaluation of the course with respect to the IDE and the secure coding subjects. Finally, I discuss the challenges, give a conclusion and an outlook. Why a new programming environment? We have Einen et al. and other studies propose that students should directly work with modern industry standard IDEs as these support auto-completion and template-based or even model-based programming. And students should learn to use the same tools they use later in the industry. Contrary, again, other approaches push programming environments that are suitable for beginners only or provide even their own programming language like Itchy Alice or Scratch. Latinin it all found out that the programming IDE causes no major difficulties. Still, Dylan et al. report that too many options in modern IDEs distract students from learning. My personal experience with students working on modern IDEs is that auto-completion can completely confuse novice programmers. For instance, they want to implement a simple for loop in Java and the IDE suggests a loop with lambda expressions. Or, in one of my software engineering projects, the IDE offers three different options to select the language level of Java and each team member had to struggle with it. Novice programmers should not spend time on configuring their IDEs. So as a compromise, I developed an IDE, the so-called Virtual C IDE, that is not far away from modern IDEs, but does not offer auto-completion or auto-correction. According to Latinin, at all, the transition to a professional IDE as the next step will then be quite easy. Students learn programming by hands-on. They have to write programs on their own, have to struggle with the syntax to learn the proper syntax. To simplify learning programming, the Virtual C IDE allows an instant debugging, thus there is no configuration needed. The IDE comes with a built-in C compiler and a debugger, so you can start right away with programming but it does not support auto-completion or auto-error fixes, neither error pop-ups. For better understanding, the process memory is visualized during debugging in a color scheme. That allows easily to find bugs, for instance, when a pointer tries to access invalid memory or if you forgot to free heap memory. The compiler integrates a static code analysis that reports warnings according to the third secure C coding standard. 
As I mentioned before, it is important for me to start programming directly according to this standard. The analyzer is per default active, the students have to deal with the warnings from the beginning. This figure shows two typical programming errors with respect to security. Reading from keyword without limiting the number of characters read and printing without a proper format string. The IDE provides a test framework that works similar to JUnit tests and allows to create exercises on a test basis. Thus, I can give an exercise description as a document and provide a link to the test file and so the students can work on their exercises at home, getting instant feedback. The test framework supports IO tests and random tests to ensure that students cannot trick, I mean code against the test and not code what we expect. In addition, the Virtual C IDE has a web interface that allows to build text-based exercises that run the test framework in the background. So students can work on complete exercises within the IDE. As a web interface has access to almost all of the IDE's functionality, you can also write tutorials to help students with their first steps. Finally, we can test our programming assignments via the web interface using automatic assessment. The students can log in from the Virtual C IDE, get an overview of his or her assignments and can access the individual assignments. Usually the tests in the assignments are based on functions or on small programs. Here's a short demonstration of our last year's assignment. Ok, I open the exercise URL from within the IDE. My login appears. I'm sorry, the dialogues are in German now. I enter my password and I get an overview of my assignments, which is empty at the moment. I select the first one and I already tried the first question, so I can retrieve from the server my current status, my current work. Just like a student, I try if it works already. No, it does not, so I can look in the test dialog and see, ok, in my main program I called the wrong function. I should call here the function fib iterative, so I change it here. I can test again. Ok, the functionality is fine, but I have a third security warning on my printf, yes. That's fine now, so I can submit again. And I see I have some style errors still, so it's not 100% my submission. So I forgot a break statement and I should not use magic numbers and so on. Let me come to the evaluation. Our course, a first year introductory C programming course for our bachelor degree program, with about 65 students enrolled. I did a standard course evaluation plus a survey about the IDE and the assessment and about the QA coding subjects with a feedback of 45 students, which is about 70%. 80% of the students stated that they had previous knowledge about programming before enrolling at the university. For the results, I divided the students into two groups. 16% assessed themselves as skilled programmers before enrolling the course, which I refer to group 1. 58% admitted they had only little or no previous knowledge, which I refer as to group 2. I show in the paper the answers to four questions about the Virtual C IDE and the assessment. I will not go into detail of all answers here, it's discussed in the paper. Almost all agreed that the first steps in the programming environment were generally easy and that they liked the automated assessment system. Interestingly, answer C of group 1 has an ambiguity, as we don't know if group 1 didn't need the dialogue or if it wasn't helpful, but in general most students stated that the test dialog was helpful to understand implementation errors. Question D had the highest diversity among the answers. 
Of course, some students see plagiarizing as an imposture, while others feel insecure and want to see or adapt solutions from others. Almost all students understand the importance of secure coding. Group 1 agrees on question F that security vulnerabilities deepens their understanding. But in general, you probably need knowledge on both language and security to completely agree on that. The counter questions G and H show that we should continue the secure coding subjects and the third security warnings. Finally, students assessed themselves in grades from 1 excellent to 5 insufficient before and after the course. Group 2 had the highest learning output. They assessed themselves 1.6 grades better after the course. In the examination we could not see a significant difference between the last years without and the year with the cure coding subjects. To conclude my talk, we successfully introduced a new programming environment with built-in secure coding feedback based on the third secure coding standard. Students understand the importance of adding secure coding subjects into the introductory course. We are currently extending our automatic assessment system with a code quality feedback report. And of course we continue to enhance the Virtual C IDE to simplify learning programming. Thank you. Any questions?